Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julia Mann and I show men and women how they can create healthy, happy, sustainable lives. And I'm really excited because today I'm joined by Eugenia O'Liberty. Hi Eugenia. Hello and thanks so much for inviting me to, to have this conversation with you. It's great to see you. So for those of you that don't yet know Eugenia, she works as a coach, a speaker, a healer and a pleasure and orgasm educator. So before we get into all of that, Eugenia, I know that right now you're living in Bali, yes. which is absolutely wonderful. But tell us about where you come from and a little bit about your childhood and the kind of values that you learnt as you grew up with your family. Sure. Um, well, thanks for asking, you know, because uh, people who connect with me right now, um, they have like this perception is like oh you know she's a coach lives in bali it's e easy for her you know it's like this kind of thing um however um i originally am come from latvia from a very small town and uh, you know like in small towns there is a small town mentality so i have been like going to school and being bullied at school quite a lot and uh, more than anything you know it's like I had um, my parents have been alcoholics so like domestic violence and emotional and physical abuse have been like everyday reality for me when I was growing up and um, that has encouraged me not to you know spend a lot of time at home I didn't feel like I belonged in uh, my school environment you know being like bullied at school especially because I grew up quite early well I had to grow up quite early and um, I always have been very independent my body developed very quickly you know like by the age of 13 I already had like big breasts you know and like and I had a lot of attention from boys in school and uh, of course, like other girls didn't like it. So they've been like spreading the rumors about me that I'm doing like um, very crazy things. And, you know, it's like, it actually made me feel like I'm very isolated. So I'm sure that a lot of people who are watching, you know, they can relate to um, not feeling like they belong because a lot of people that I come in contact with, you know, some, somewhere in life feel that way. Um, but actually, you know, it's bizarre and, and incredible at the same time that right now I help people with very thing that I have been bullied for. I like think that often, happens. that often happens, doesn't it, when you're a coach? You're, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's so amazing that you've been through it so you can help people. But at the time, that's a huge amount of things to deal with that's you know how on earth did you get through that at the time Eugenia? well you know I actually didn't know any other way to be honest I felt like it was a normal thing you know that maybe not everyone goes through that but it was uh, my everyday reality so somehow I became like accustomed to abuse that this is just like another thing that I had to deal with you know I didn't think that it was like out of ordinary or something like that but what when I really started noticing that my problems really began when I got married when I was 20 and uh, what happened then somehow I realized that I've married the guy a man who is the spit image of my dad like with his behaviors with his you know like even his laughter was like spit copy of my dad's laughter that was like quite you know bizarre so um i've been married for a very short time for three months because already in that time uh the domestic abuse has started so i've been you know very lucky to escape um after three months and get divorced like a year later so that has been a blessing but then i have started noticing that each and every relationship that I was attracting in my life was somewhat the same. You know, it was like all based on alcohol. It was all based on physical violence, emotional abuse, you know. And I was like, one time I remember what actually really rang the 
the bell for me was when I spoke to my mother on the phone. At the time, I used to live in England and my family back in Latvia. So I was talking on the phone with my mother and she was complaining to me about my dad. It's like, oh, he's this, he's that, you know? And, and what I said to her, I was like, well, mom, if you don't like it, you can leave. Nobody like holds you down there, you know? And when she was complaining, I understood that I have exactly the same complaints about my relationships, about my partner. And when I put the phone down, I just thought to myself, well, maybe it's time for me to take my own advice here. Because I don't know about you, but you know, it's like in the past, I was so quick to give advices, but I never would take my own advice. You know, we are so like, yeah, you should do this and that and that and that, but we never take our own advice. But that was the time when I actually stopped and thought, that's the time for me to take my own advice. And I did, you know, and I left and my healing like journey has somewhat begun from there. Wow. I mean, I can absolutely relate to you and what you're saying about attracting men who were, had behavior that, that um, was portrayed by your, your father. I absolutely experienced that. <clears throat> and there was a point when I, I didn't experience the abuse that you experienced, but I, um, there was a point when I realized there was some sort of connection and then I went and did something about it. I went to the landmark forum and um, started that healing process. So of course there might be people right now who are struggling with what you're talking about. Um, maybe they're going through that right now or they've experienced it in the past. But I think that actually generally um, it can be a real struggle to be deeply intimate in relationship can't it so so why do you think people struggle so much with that apart from maybe what well, maybe it is based on the past what do you think well based on what i know and what i have experienced in my own life and what i have learned um you know we all want to be loved we all seeking for love we all want to be understood and valued However, so many of us have no idea how to receive love. We, like a lot of us know how to give love, but then receiving love, you know, can be so vulnerable, especially when you come from the background of the abuse and trauma. And when I say trauma, I don't mean that like, you know, uh, a massive thing that, you know, like car crash or like, you know, like traumatic relationships or violence or something like that. Trauma can be something as small as, you know, uh, somebody said something to you. And like, especially when we kids, we are so um, uh, taking the impressions so easily. We are so pure that we take everything so close to our heart and it creates this like, uh, emotional response that we make decisions for ourselves. I never going to experience this again. You know, this is dangerous. You know, I'm never going to go there again. So it's not safe for me. So a lot of, um, you know, situations where people actually struggling to be intimate or vulnerable or uh, open their heart for love, it's based on the past trauma. Like, because you know, when you have a heart heartbreak, you know, you like in a loving relationship and over the sudden, you know, uh, either a person dies or leaves, you know, it breaks your heart and you create this like massive, like trauma in your heart. And very often what people do, they decide never again, I'm going to allow myself to experience that. So we become very guarded, you know, oh, this is like, too, too, too precious for me to like give it away. It's too precious, even though we really want that, we don't allow people in because there is too much at stake. But people don't understand this. Like what is more at stake is like, let somebody in and having the risk of breaking your heart or being isolated and lonely till the rest of your life. Yes. And you're not just talking about a partner breaking your heart. Are you talking about 
you know, that somebody in our life outside of a relation, a, a partnership relationship, um, someone may have died or left or, and um, the grief of that experience closes our heart down. So it's not accessible to anybody. You know, um, I have worked with people like right now, I have been working with people for the past five years and I could see that, you know, um, I do this very uh, strong process with people to eliminate limiting beliefs and like re, um, uh, redesign the map, you know, or the mind. And basically what, uh, what happens, um, I have worked with people like us kids been watching some TV program and their favorite character died and it had like such a strong impact on, on them that, you know, they create abundance um, trauma, trauma of abandonment. And I have been working with people who some, some of my clients have been able to go as far back as being a toddlers could not even walk, but all they could remember that they've been scared of some person who was coming towards them. And they decided that they cannot have people too close to them because it's dangerous. You know, because like, let's be honest, you know, when we making decisions as the kids, it's very different to making decisions as a growing up. But what happens when we have like this stored in our body, it's very, you know, um, active. Like you make the decisions from the place of child because that, that inner child rules your life at the time. And you're not even aware of that. Like um, I've been in Landmark Forum also, and I love that it actually have been a foundation for me for my transformation is where my healing has begun. And uh, yeah, it's like, you literally don't have any choice there. You know, it's like you have this uh, automatic responses and you just like re react on automation. So unless you discover what all those default responses are, you will continue making the same mistakes over and over again. You're gonna, continue to feel unsafe like especially you know a lot of women feel very unsafe in their body in their mind you know in their like um like if they wear something too bright if they show a little bit more skin it's unsafe you know to to get too much attention and things like that you know where actually when you change your relationship and you learn to feel safety no matter what your experiences be begin to be different. Yeah, absolutely. And otherwise, if we don't address that and start to um, shift that, then it's we're just children walking around in a in a grown up body, aren't we? Really, that's just getting older, you know. But inside, it's all the same. So, what kind of problems, Eugenia, do your clients come to you with, and how exactly do you help them? But this is a great question. And, uh, you know, majority of my clients, they desire to be in love. Majority of my clients, they desire that juicy and passionate relationships. And, you know, they are very often are very successful people who have created a very good careers. You know, I've been working with singers. I have been working with celebrity photographers. I have been working like with a very um, successful people on the paper, you know, but it's like, but then what occurs is the question, what is it all for if I have no one to share this with? And, you know, usually, um, the people and like also people like uh, healers and doctors uh, who are very smart, you know, but they understand that if up until now, like usually the, the age range that I work with people is um, 21 to about 65. That's the age range that I have worked with so far. But majority of my clients, they're in their 40s plus. So what happens is like, if they realize, if I haven't figured this out by myself up until now, and I keep repeating this, the same mistakes over and over again, clearly, you know, I don't want to waste any more time. I just want this, you know, 
resolved and done. So, yeah, so majority of my clients want to create a loving relationship. They want to start dating. They want to feel secure. They want to feel loved. And this is what I'm helping them with, overcoming breakup, creating long-lasting, positive a relationship with self and relationship with others that rock their world because hey who doesn't want that <laughs> I that. it's so so important that the relationship we have with ourselves is a nourishing one isn't it so when it comes to yeah, habits sure. Eugenia mm-hmm. what habits have you adopted that really really serve you this is a fantastic question and you know one and the main habit for me is honesty honesty with myself because sometimes you know um uh, my um my habits was like oh that's his fault oh <laughs> that's her fault yep i'm you know i've got nothing to do with this like i would refuse take responsibility in the past for my actions and reactions and you know honesty with myself actually allowed me to look what where is my part in here every time when i'm in communication with someone i'm completely aware what is my my part here you know and it's like whether that's a conflict especially when there is a conflict i'm looking at how have a how have I been during that process? What could I do differently? You know, so that is a massive, massive part. And another thing is a commitment. I had a real challenge with commitment. You know, I remember that I was scared of commitment. It was actually for me a thing that was like commitment gonna take my freedom away. I was scared of that. And as soon as I realized that commitment and discipline gives me freedom, that has changed my life. Wow. You know, and wow. another like major habit is honoring my word. Honoring my word. So when I, uh, you know, I, of course, I'm not 100% on it. It's like everyday practice, you know, everyday practice. And sometimes, I forget and sometimes I miss and sometimes things happen and life gets in a way. But this is again, how can I restore that, you know, trust with myself about honoring my word and then being honest with myself about that. Fabulous. So, so powerful. One last question. Mm -hmm. When you are no longer on this planet, how Mm -hmm. would you like to be remembered? I would love to be remembered that I was super fun. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I love having fun. You know, I love being playful. I love to have a good time. In fact, I really believe that I need to be paid for having a good time and show people how to have a good time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fun is so underrated, isn't it, Eugenia? I'm oh, totally with right. you all the way on that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And also, you know, it's like, well, having fun. Um, also, I, want, I would love to believe that I have helped the humanity to create, you know, their dreams into reality, because I'm super, super passionate about manifestations and creating the life you really love and feel passionate and excited about. Like, we live only once, you know, and uh, giving people that perspective is like, hey, what is better for you to like sit there and have a fear that, you know, oh, your heart may be broken. And, you know, it's like, so what? Are you not even going to try to live a better life because like imaginary fear that isn't even true right now? Or are you going to go out there? And it's like, well, you know what? I'm going to have a no because understand that the rejection is only a sensation in your body. It's like, And the story what we attach to it is a different thing. And when people understand that, they're like, okay, taking more risks. Okay, living like more interesting life. And I would love to be remembered for that, for sure. Wonderful. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. 
All there is for you to say is Eugenia O'Liberty, thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for being here and inviting me to join you in this conversation. And it's been absolutely fantastic talking about this with you.